average American probably can't for tell money. you who lives in and, and that's why. Pennsylvania Avenue. Hello, Mr. Donald Trump. I am here to inform you that you, uh, I am placing you under citizen's arrest. What are you, morons? But what they probably can tell you is who lives in a pineapple under the sea. SpongeBob, SpongeBob SquarePants. Square the most popular cartoon of my generation, and nothing else Fuck really yeah, comes dude. close. We love SpongeBob. Here's a challenge. Fuck yeah. Try scrolling through your typical social media feeds and see how long you can go without seeing anything SpongeBob related. There I am, Gary, there I am. You may find that it's pretty difficult because SpongeBob is absolutely everywhere. People post SpongeBob pictures from Tumblr to 4chan and everywhere in between. And even more impressively, almost all of the SpongeBob related references memes and reaction images you see are based on the first three seasons of the series a stretch of about 120 episodes that most people would classify the og as the and the great ones fuck yeah the golden age for sure if you look at nickelodeon's programming schedule today spongebob Squarepants, a 19 year old cartoon still receives more airtime than any other fuck show on yeah. the network to put that in perspective futurama Good. came out the same Good year as spongebob and since then, it ran for four seasons on Fox until it was canceled, and then acquired by Cartoon Network where it aired as reruns on Adult Swim for three years. Then, starting in 2006, the series released four direct-to-DVD movies until 2010, when Comedy Central aired the series for two more seasons until it got canceled for the final time in 2013. That is, until 2014 when Futurama returned to Fox for a one-time crossover episode with The Simpsons. And since that point, the series has continued to air as reruns on Comedy Central and now Sci-Fi. And during that whole journey, over all that time, Spongebob has been continually broadcast on Nickelodeon. If Jesus you Christ. SpongeBob to other children's cartoons released during the same time, nothing even comes wow. close to its longevity. Rocket Power came out the same year as Spongebob on Nickelodeon. Fuck yeah, Rocket Power was sick. As well as polio. Even historically good cartoons from around the same time as Spongebob, like Powerpuff Girls, Ed, Ed and Eddie, Jimmy Neutron. Oh, all great, goaded, goaded. But not so goaded, all of them. And it should be no surprise why Nickelodeon still airs Spongebob as much as they do. Since Spongebob premiered in 1999, the show has generated over $13 billion in revenue from merchandising alone. And considering Just for merch- What? Oh. Just for merch- I thought it was the everything. Parent company oh my fucking god. $13 billion of revenue per year, you could infer that Spongebob alone has accounted for at least 5% of Viacom's wow. total revenue since 1999. Keep in mind, that's not just 5% of Nickelodeon's revenue. That's 5% of the total revenue from every media property Viacom owns. So Dude, holy right shit. Airing SpongeBob for as long as they're in business. SpongeBob just keeps going. And for as long as I can remember, SpongeBob Great music choice by them, by the way. Everyone watched SpongeBob when I was growing up in elementary school. And as everyone got older and past the age when most people grow out of watching cartoons, SpongeBob always seemed to stick around. You were never too old to make a SpongeBob joke. Even during SpongeBob's later seasons, <laughs> It never really grew stale for me because I transitioned to watching YouTube poops of old Spongebob episodes. Fuck yes! Fuck you! The first Hell yeah, video those were great. of my channel to reach a thousand views was a Spongebob YouTube poop. You could argue that the first three and a half years of this YouTube channel were built almost entirely from the popularity of me remixing episodes of Spongebob. Even today, new Spongebob YouTube poops continue to garner hundreds of thousands of views, and extending beyond YTP, Spongebob has become almost synonymous with meme culture on the internet today. Yeah. Everywhere. From lines to reaction images to portrayed by Spongebob. Spongebob is, by far, the most popular cartoon character of this millennium. He has reached a status on par with the likes of Mickey Mouse, Bugs Bunny, and Homer Simpson. But by many measures, Spongebob is a more relevant character than any of them. Characters like Mickey Mouse are superficially popular due to branding and marketing. 
Kids today are certainly not watching Mickey Mouse cartoons or sharing Mickey yeah, that's Mouse true. memes. Yeah, that's true. I never watched I never watched Mickey Mouse. I'll watch SpongeBob here or there, you know? Mascot. Come across it. Principal Skinner, the happiest place on earth is a registered Disneyland copyright. No, no. And it's heading for a great big lawsuit. You made a big mistake, Skinner. Well, so did you. You got an ex-Green Beret mad. I spent the next three years in a POW camp. Characters like Homer Simpson are certainly iconic. However, they exist more as relics of a bygone era. Unlike Mickey Mouse, the Simpsons grew organically in popularity and became one of the most essential cultural elements of the 1990s. Quality schmality. If I had a TV show, I'd run that sucker into the ground. Yeah, it's 2018 now, and The Simpsons is not exactly the most cutting-edge programming anymore. Homer's legacy has already been decided, and the character has nothing new to bring to the table. SpongeBob not only rose to fame organically, but it continues to grow and evolve within our culture 19 years later. Don't miss Nick's newest Snake Tune. It's the never-before-seen Snake Peek of SpongeBob SquarePants. Right after Dude, that's insane. WWF? Oh my of god. Of a new era. Here's to another lousy millennium. The Tom video? What? Downward spiral. The oh my god. Thrown around a lot these days and I Chris really Jericho. <laughs> I think it's just a slippery blanket term invented by 40-year-old marketing people to describe young people who know how to use the internet. We're the first generation to have access to unlimited information. We don't fall for the same marketing tricks that corporations used on our parents. And companies can never figure out what we like because we don't know what we like. Actually, that's oh, it's not doing exactly pretty good. true. We know one thing we like, and that's Spongebob. Spongebob has somehow managed to become the most quintessential entertainment property among young people. This but one the same amount of views, but all the other stats on are great. Code ...of the most complex generation in history. In the entertainment industry, companies have invested millions in trying to come up with a character like Spongebob. Every media company wants a Spongebob, a character that becomes so popular that it practically prints money for the network. And ironically, Spongebob wasn't created by a corporate think tank. He wasn't created by a fleet of overpaid marketing, public relations, and diversity specialists. The most popular children's cartoon of the 21st century was created by a marine biologist. I actually, for a while, studied marine science before animation. So when I started to think, well, if I were to do an animal show, what would I do? Not one about bunnies or dogs and cats it would be about these sea animals that i, I really like and um and, that, huh. and somehow all that information sort of collided into one thing spongebob incredible i just fucking love the show but have you ever wondered why spongebob is so popular you're probably thinking it's the humor practically every reference to spongebob today exists within the context of comedy I mean, Spongebob has so many funny scenes that you could probably quote word for word. The style of comedy is just so 24. random, zany, and unexpected. So is Spongebob's uh, humor really that much better than every other show? Well, where's no, the weak man? Really, actually. Plenty of cartoons have a similar style of pacing and comedy, and they aren't nearly as popular. Maybe you could argue that Spongebob invented this style, and similar cartoons aren't as popular because the audience sees them as discount knockoffs. But even if that were true, the difference in popularity between something like The Simpsons and Family Guy is far less than the difference between Spongebob and a show like Chowder. Something else is definitely going on here. So what exactly makes Spongebob stick out so much from other cartoons? What makes Spongebob so memorable? What makes Spongebob click? Well, to find out, I decided to watch some old episodes. I couldn't quite figure it out until I saw this one scene from one episode. Then, suddenly, it all made sense. But before I get into what I discovered, let me first preface it with a simple question. Who is the most important character in Spongebob? 
Now, you're probably looking at that. Huh. Bro, I don't know. It's not SpongeBob. It's not Patrick. I don't even know if it'd be Squidward. I think it is. Probably Squidward. I'd probably that say Squidward. No shrimp, Barnacle Head. It's the character whose name is the title of the show. No shot. And yes, obviously SpongeBob is the face of SpongeBob, Squidward. Yeah. But is he really the most important character? Sure, he's an energetic. I just think Squidward pulls every single thing together again, every so single episode. And other cartoon characters from the 2000s. SpongeBob alone wasn't enough to carry a show to transcendent popularity. So who was? Maybe you're thinking it's Patrick and his hilariously idiotic quotes and moments. You got it set to M for many. When it should be set also, to Also Squidward, w yeah, it mo most but relatable. Again, but also character has showed up in a Also Squidward is like Squidward appeals to an older audience as well, which I think is also huge ton of other cartoons before and after spongebob so patrick is nothing special maybe you're thinking mr krabs is the most important character and how his ruthless penny pitching greed is a brilliant I'm laughing at him then feel his pain as you grow up yeah are suffocating yeah. american society the gentle laborer shall no longer suffer from the noxious greed of mr krabs we will dismantle oppression yeah i would say squidward we'll saw the foundation of big business in crazy Paris. though But to be fair, you have to have a very high IQ to understand the deep anti-capitalistic themes of SpongeBob SquarePants. So Mr. Krabs probably isn't the character that gives the show the widest appeal. No, no, no. The most important character of SpongeBob isn't Mr. Krabs, Patrick, or even SpongeBob. The character that single-handedly makes SpongeBob work is Squidward Hell yeah. Tentacles. And it might not be obvious why. But when I watched this one very simple yep. scene from the episode Dying for Pie, all the pieces of the puzzle suddenly came together. This short, basic clip with no dialogue represents precisely why Spongebob is such a popular show. When I watched this scene as a kid, I Why did it get so loud? But when I watch this scene today, yep. I'm Squidward. You yep. See, for there kids it is. I grew up watching SpongeBob. This show acts as a link, a connection, a time. So insane. Past it actually is so times. weird. When we were kids, we all acted. You can't like leave SpongeBob. SpongeBob. We were joyful, naive, enthusiastic, you can't. optimistic. Everything we did seemed like a new, fun adventure. Then, somewhere along the way, almost everyone turns into Squidward. Bland, cynical, pessimistic. Trapped in the monotonous, never-ending routine of adult yep. life. Yep. In case you've forgotten, here's how things work. I so it's food. sad though. You At all the, the same food. time, it's then really fucking sad, dude. The food. We do that for 40 years, and, and then, then we, we die. die. It's kind of sad, to be completely honest. Work, Mr. Squidward. More sad as big as that? Yeah, but like. <laughs> SpongeBob a lot of people end up in that, and that's what's sad about it. Between the innocence of childhood and the cynicism of adulthood. Just think about Squidward's life in the show. It sure sucks, doesn't it? He works a minimum wage job as a cashier. He tries to find happiness in his only true passion of art and music, maintaining a sliver of hope that one day he can quit his job at the Krusty Krab to become a commercially successful artist. But his lack of talent can only produce works that are mediocre at best. Society rejects his efforts. He's told time and time again that his passion projects are no good. I guess in a way it's like don't give up on the shit, right? Like no matter how sad he gets, he never gives up on it, right? leaving him doomed to toil in a dead-end career of fast food service. He believes he's better than everyone else, yet there he is, 
stuck in the same pen as the rest of the simpletons. He has abandoned his dreams. He knows he's not good enough. Life yeah, has I can see that. Him, leaving him to stew in bitter contempt at how society has dealt him an unfair hand. Now tell me, does that description not represent almost every young adult of this generation? But a visit to the Krusty Krab makes everyone happy. And what could be better SpongeBob than- SpongeBob made us fun. who we are today. Being dead. It seems like most of us wish- Dude, wait. The crab makes everyone happy. And what could be better than serving up smiles? Being dead. Pretty sure I had a close conversation like that with a manager at Costco, and that's about what I said. And I'm not even kidding. It seems like most of us wish we could go back to being like SpongeBob. But do we really? If you strip away the bright colors, the wacky underwater setting, and all the weird anthropomorphic fish people, SpongeBob's life is just as depressing as Squidward's. He works yeah. the same dead end job at the same fast food restaurant. He no, said SpongeBob has a won't work in today's society. It wouldn't. And it doesn't. No one respects him. He's not tough. He's not strong. He's not cool. He can't pass his driver's license test no matter how many times he tries. SpongeBob's life is just as depressing as anybody else's. And yet, through all of that, he keeps his chin up and keeps on trying. SpongeBob is the anti Squidward, and Squidward is the anti SpongeBob. And their conflict is the essential thematic clash of not just the show, but the lives of the audience watching the show. Yeah. Some of the best and most it's like memorable Tom and Jerry. SpongeBob episodes of all time are the ones where SpongeBob and Squidward are involved in the same adventure. It's almost like, like a Tom like and Jerry type of thing. Where SpongeBob is able to derive more entertainment from a cardboard box than Squidward can from the television that accompanies it. Eventually, Squidward unlocks the same enjoyment by learning to use his imagination. So wait, in a if way, this is just super complex, Tom and Jerry. The more I think about it, like, SpongeBob, SpongeBob is, uh, Jerry and Squidward is Tom. Squidward and SpongeBob Literally, like, the exact same task. thing. Squidward's just so much more in-depth and complex. SpongeBob's enthusiasm until ultimately, SpongeBob's childlike optimism wins out, and Squidward gets to experience a rare moment of genuine happiness only for his misery to quickly reset for future episodes. But what about when the opposite happens? Uh. When SpongeBob experiences a rare moment of sadness? Well, that happens in one of the most classic and popular episodes of all time. Pizza Krusty Krab Pizza it starts is off the as a pizza for you and, and me. Squidward episode, with SpongeBob's optimistic spirit overcoming adversity and dragging Squidward along a marathon delivery route. For the whole journey, Squidward wants to quit. He doubts Spongebob time and time again and even tries to sabotage the delivery at one point. And yet, despite all of this, Spongebob's antiquated survival guide manages to miraculously bring them to their destination. And then, after all that effort, this piece of fat f***ing slams the door in Spongebob's face. This Persona. barnacle head Fuck is you. the most despicable Fuck that guy. in the history of fictional characters. A it's a boulder. So hated that it's they a rock. never ever brought him back. It's this guy a should rock. serve as a permanent reminder that you should never act this way <laughs> to anyone who works in food service. Their lives are bad enough. But anyway, this barnacle head gives SpongeBob such a brutal dose of reality that it completely shatters his naive, optimistic bubble. And we get a it's rare a big, moment where SpongeBob beautiful is rock. Pioneers used to ride these this babies pops one for of the miles. Most scenes in the whole series when Squidward puts his cynicism aside and sticks up for his friend. It's a truly gratifying and heartwarming moment, and it really makes you wonder about the true depth of Squidward's character. Once again, if you really pay attention Squidward to these also episodes, is start to definitely on some kind of drugs. Probably just weed, but changes his attitude. For in sure smokes cases, at least weed. Squidward is as much of a protagonist as SpongeBob. This idea gets fully realized in Band Geeks, an episode that many fans regard as the greatest SpongeBob episode ever. This is an episode that hands Squidward the reins. He finally gets an opportunity to follow his dream and make it big as a successful great, artist. Great, great episode. just like every other one of his attempts at chasing his aspirations, it begins to look like a complete failure. But then, just when all hope seems lost, SpongeBob helps the entire town band together and they deliver ah, the band best together, I get it. Ah. in the history of the Bubble Bowl. And in the end, Squidward is hoisted into the air, triumphant at last. Finally achieving his dream of that episode a felt so artist. good. 
I don't care how long the series lasts or whatever the final episode is, because this moment right here is the true spiritual series finale of SpongeBob SquarePants. And in my humble opinion, it's the most iconic moment in the history of the series. But why should we care about any of this? SpongeBob isn't Feel real. That. Bikini Bottom isn't real. Nothing about SpongeBob is real. And at the end of the day, SpongeBob is just a series of colorful images strung together for 11 minutes a pop. A TV show that hasn't even been good since 2004. But that's the thing though. Why did SpongeBob stop being good? Why do all of the show's most memorable moments seem to only come from those vaunted first three seasons? For most fans, everything else has been simply mediocre. Yeah. Numerous essays have been produced attempting to explain SpongeBob's decline in quality from season four onward, citing reasons from creator Steven Hillenburg's departure to production changes to creative burnout. All of these explanations seem to have one thing in common. They all have a shared sense that new SpongeBob is missing something. And for me, that thing is the essential dichotomy between SpongeBob and Squidward. Hmm. In the early seasons, SpongeBob was an adult with childlike qualities. However, if you pay attention to his characterization in later seasons, he's basically just a child. Squidward hasn't changed that much, but it doesn't matter. Because simply changing Spongebob was enough to throw their entire character dynamic out of 12 whack. and onward? SpongeBob I haven't seen a, really any of the new new stuff. They were both just I feel like they, they tried the to, for a while, make, make Spongebob super cartoony, young, appealing the for like very, very young kids. Came from how SpongeBob and I don't know about it. The world differently. And when you take SpongeBob and turn him into a brainless child who cries, yeah, they tried Donald's to. They tried to go so far with him, they couldn't get there. You no longer have a dichotomy of perspectives towards adult life. All you have at this point is Squidward basically babysitting kid SpongeBob for 11 minutes. Rather than having SpongeBob act as a foil for Squidward, you make SpongeBob antagonize Squidward through obnoxious antics. This kind of stuff. Some of them are so fun, Bunny funny, and Elmer but. Fudd. But it's just not the kind of stuff that made us love Spongebob. And yeah, obviously there's more to Spongebob than just Spongebob and Squidward. But the same theme applies to basically everything that's wrong with the later seasons of the show. Spongebob started off as something truly unique and special. And in just a few seasons, they turned it into just another cartoon for children. The reason Spongebob became yeah. mediocre was because they removed the spirit of what connected the show to adults. And sure, the later seasons of Spongebob aren't that good, but you shouldn't let that detract from what the show managed to accomplish during those first magical 120 episodes. There are millions of people out there who grew up watching Spongebob and are in their 20s now. People who probably stopped watching cartoons over a decade ago, but still get a kick out of Spongebob <laughs> references. Spongebob managed to define an entire generation. And there are very few other television shows that can we live that off play. SpongeBob I don't at our core. Other show we do. We really do for entertainment, I swear. Whatever a millennial is, a generation who has been raised with dreams of grandeur only to fall into I a wasteland you. of mediocrity. A collection of young adults who desperately want to believe that they're unique, that they're talented, that they matter, despite finding themselves wasting away in a dead end job lining the pockets of some rich a hole. The sad reality is that most of the people my age are a generation of Squidwards. People who feel like they deserve better. People who feel like society has inhibited them from fulfilling their true potential. People who have grown cynical and jaded and depressed because they believe that the world has screwed them. But I don't see why. That, that was such a sad way. episode. I don't see why people. That's like a money doesn't equal like happiness kind of episode. I think when we grow up, a lot of us are so desperate to act older and be mature and cool and edgy. But I think somewhere along the way, a lot of us lose sight of something important. We are all born with an inherent sense of childlike wonder. When we're kids, everything is just so much more interesting. We're naturally curious. We're eager to discover the world and interact with it. We have hyperactive imaginations. We draw pictures, we write stories, we create things that have intrinsic value to us because we take satisfaction in creating them. And eventually, there comes a time when we just stop. The world stops being fun. We stop exploring, we stop imagining. Everything becomes dull, exactly. and repetitive, and uninspired. But why do we do this exactly to ourselves? Right, Matrix. We suddenly jettison our capacity for creativity and imagination, and for what? 
to fit in better with other sad, boring adults? I bet that everybody watching this can remember a moment in their lives when someone has told you to grow up and made you feel ashamed for acting even the least bit childish. It's all too common for our society to stigmatize people who demonstrate signs of immaturity. But as far as I'm concerned, as long as you're a good person and you pull your own weight, what difference does it make if you occasionally act like a kid? Being an adult blows. You have taxes, insurance, rent payments, lawn care, litigation, hair loss, weight gain, erectile dysfunction, and on top of all of that, you're expected to be boring too. So excuse me if I'm unwilling to abandon my childlike sense of wonderment in exchange for those fantastic perks. You shouldn't have to buy into this nebulous perceived notion of maturity. As a matter of fact, most people don't buy into it if they're being Could honest be no with work. themselves. When you look at the comments of any YouTube video about something more than five years old, you'll see people nostalgically fawning about the good old days. It turns out everyone's in a race to grow up until they finally get to be grown-ups. Then, all of a sudden, they want to be young again. Some of these people have such a strong desire to return to the past because they feel like everything has changed for the worse. When realistically, the world hasn't changed for the worse. Your outlook has. You've become a Squidward. And remember, no one wants to be a Squidward. And everyone should want to be more like Spongebob. I don't care if you're the most jaded, cynical, edgy dude on the planet. You should still try to be like Spongebob, because Spongebob has something that the Squidwards of the world will never have. And that's genuine happiness. I guess what I'm trying to say with all of this is that you only get to be a kid for so long. Enjoy it. And even if you think you're too old, you shouldn't let that stop yourself from enjoying the same stuff you did when you were a kid. You shouldn't worry about those people telling but you that. But plot twist: What if SpongeBob is the actual depressed one? Because he's put on a fake smile all the time, boring. and nobody realized so that he's the boring. one that's depressed. Go out and have some fun. Like hmm? Draw a picture, write a story, sing a song, watch some cartoons. Based thought. And if you happen to watch one about a talking sponge who lives in a pineapple under the sea, you can stop and appreciate it, because there will never ever be another cartoon like it. It's not about winning. It's about fun. It's a great fucking video. That's it.